What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech, and my son Devin right here plays guitar, and my other son Dominic plays guitar also. And we're gonna be fixing this amplifier. If you have a very old amplifier, what you can do is, once you remove this, don't scratch your hand. Once you remove these nuts right here, you wanna use electronic cleaner like that, and you can spray it in here, and then twist it. And what that does, it cleans the connection. So you don't, every time you turn the volume knob, if you hear static, that's because it has a dirty connection. All right, so what you want to do now is you want to get these two screws and these screws off. You want to turn it sideways because if you have it right side up, the amplifier is going to fall down on the speaker and break the speaker. And you always want to unplug the power cord first. All right, let's go ahead and slide this out. All right, so right here, you want to take off the positive, the plus sign. This is the red cable and the black cable. You want to plug that. This was a little bit loose, actually. And if you want to tighten that back up, you just get some pliers and you can squeeze that. So right here, there's squeeze pins. If you see right here, only thing you have to do is squeeze that and it should come right off this side. There he goes. And this side comes off. There's one right here. There's another one in the middle. And then just squeeze those tabs in. And then lift up on that side. Careful. Uh, Alright, so now that is off. It looks like it's coming out now. Careful. You want to mainly, the main thing you want to protect is that glass tube right here. This glass tube is very fragile and that's what makes it, gives it a, like a really great analog sound. All right, so let's spin this around right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at any, see if there's any bad solder joints. All right, so let's go ahead and hit it up with some solder. So this is the volume knob right here. We're gonna hit that up with some solder. That one actually looks fine. I don't see any like cracks in the solder joint. And, but I'm just gonna hit it up with some solder anyway. All right, so this is the um, plug-in, the input for the guitar cable. And if you wiggle it, Sometimes it'll go in and out, you know, it cuts in and out, but not in this case. Looks like the solder joints are um, actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and solder these connections right here, just to show you if you have that problem where it cuts in and out. All right, so right here, let's go ahead and take off the ground. All right, so right here, you can see that there's two bad solder joints right here and you can tell they're burnt marked. See the burn marks right there? And I flip over the board and you can see the resistors. Um, show you. These two gray resistors right here. Well, they don't look burned, so I think they're pretty, I think they're good. And the reason why I think they're good, for one, they're not burned at all on top. And for two, every time I bang on top of the amplifier, the audio works. So when the audio cuts out, I bang my fist on top of the um, amplifier and it works again. That indicates that it's a loose connection. This is a, a Marshall Amp Valve State 40V model 8040. Now on the opposite side of this right here, you'll see two resistors, two gray resistors. These are three watt 68 ohm resistors. So let's go ahead and test them anyway, just to find out if they're good. Since they're connected in parallel, they are not going to read 68 ohms. They're going to probably read like closer to half that, like maybe 34 ohms, I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and put the meter in ohms mode, which is the horseshoe looking thing. Positive lead there, my negative lead on the other side of the resistor. And we're reading about 34 ohms right there. 
So that's good. And this one right here, let's do the same. Okay, that's good too, see? And now if they're connected in series, you would get a 68 ohms. But just, just to show you, the best way to read parts is add a circuit. So if I was gonna cut the leg right there, I'm gonna cut this leg, now it's add a circuit. Let's go ahead and read that now. Add a circuit, and it should now read 68 ohms. You see, and it does. Let's go ahead and solder that back up. Now scratch the surface so I get a better solder connection. So it looks like there's a, a pin right here that needs soldering, and these pins right here. And this is these these circle of pins that you see right here. That's for the tube. So I'm gonna hit that up with some solder and the resistors. These are the two back connections. Go ahead. These are the two back connections. Yeah, I'm gonna do the other one. Heat it up the side. Push on it. So let's now go ahead and put the ground cable back on. Now, if this green wire right here, that's the ground wire. If this green wire is loose or the screw is loose, then that can cause you audio problems too. Another thing is, if you, anytime you hear any kind of static in the sound, it could be the filter capacitors. And you can check these capacitors. If they're bubbled, you wanna swap them out, change them out. But these are flat on top. I'm thinking that they're okay. The best way to check these capacitors is add a circuit using a capacitor meter. And this is actually the um, amplifier chip right here. All right, so you want to turn all these down and you want to put the line to where it says zero. Go ahead and test it out. If you found this video informative, give me a big thumbs up. And if you want more how-to videos like this coming your way, subscribe to Tampa Tech and share this video to anyone that this video may help.